All right, kiddos, we just ended up talking about um, the periodic property of atomic radius. So I would hope that now if I gave you uh, four elements on the periodic table, you should be able to arrange them in order of increasing atomic radius. So let's practice one of those, okay? Let's say I gave you this element here, we'll call it element A, and this element over here, we'll call it element B, and we'll pick uh, one over here, we'll call it element C, and then we'll pick this element over here, we'll call it element D. And I wanted you to arrange those, so arrange, in order of increasing atomic radius. Alright, so in order of increasing atomic radius, that seems to me like I'd want the smallest one first. Isn't that what increasing means? Smallest to largest? Okay, so we have four elements, A, B, C, and D. Which of those four would be the smallest? Well, let's see. It looks like A or B are going to be the smallest because they only have two energy levels. C and D have, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven energy levels each. So either A or B is going to be the smallest. Which one's smaller, A or B? Let's see. Generally decreases when you move. Yeah, letter B would have the smallest radius of that group of four elements. It's smaller than A, because remember when you go across a period it gets smaller, but the reason is you're gaining positive charges when you go across, you're gaining protons without gaining energy levels. So the effective nuclear charge causes those electrons to be pulled in more tightly. Okay, then A would be the next largest. Now we have to choose between D and C. Which would be the next biggestest? Let's see. Decreases when you, yeah, that makes sense. You're going to gain protons without gain. So C would be next, right? It's further to the right. You're gaining protons without gaining any more energy levels. And the largest of those four would be B, would be D. So if you have B, A, C, D as your order, great job. Okay, you understand pretty well um, predicting atomic radius based upon the position, the element's position on the periodic table. And that is a periodic property. All right. Today we're going to talk about ions. So we're going to define what positive ions and negative ions are and how they're formed. And we're going to talk about their radius and how we can predict radius based upon their position on the periodic table. So first, let's just talk about what a positive ion is. Positive ion is an atom that carries a positive charge. Well, how does it carry a positive charge? Well, let's pick on the element sodium to begin with. Okay. Na. So let's find sodium on the periodic table. Here it is. It's atomic number 11. So that means sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons, right? Now, if I want to make that a positive ion, so I want to turn it into Na with a positive 1 charge. How would I do that? Well, some students will say, Hummer, that's easy. Just start adding protons. Protons are positive. If you give it 12 protons, it'll have a positive one charge. But be careful, if I go to 12 protons, don't I turn it into the element magnesium? I change its atomic number. So don't mess with the number of protons. Sodium with a positive one charge still must have 11 protons. Well, how many electrons would it have then if it has a positive one charge? That's right. If it had 10 electrons, it would have one more positive than it would negative. And so it becomes what we call a positive ion. So how did I do that? How did the atom become a positive ion? That's right. It lost electrons. Now, they're technically not lost. They go somewhere. But for the sake of our, our discussion here, we're going to say they're lost. Let's do another example. Uh, let's pick on magnesium, OK? So magnesium is atomic number 12. So magnesium has 12 protons and 12 electrons. Well, the magnesium ion is a very common ion. It's two positive. How many protons does it have? Yeah, if you said 12, good job, because you can't change the number of protons. How many electrons would it have if it's two positive? If you said 10, good job. So it lost two electrons, didn't it, to become a two positive ion. Now, what do you think happens to the size of an atom 
when it becomes a positive ion? Of a neutral atom when it becomes a positive ion? Yeah, you would be correct in saying they get smaller. Okay, so the atomic radius or the ionic radius decreases. It gets smaller. But the question is, why? Well, let's talk about the simple answer first. What happens to the proton to electron ratio when I go from something neutral to something that's positive? Let's see. When it's neutral, protons and electrons equal each other, don't they? But when it's positive, don't I have more protons than I have electrons? I have more positives than I have negatives. So the simple answer is the proton to electron ratio increases. Now there's something else that happens that might not be quite as obvious. Okay, Let's take the magnesium atom, for instance. If I were to write the electron configuration for the magnesium atom, wouldn't it be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2? Let's check, just to be sure. 1, 2, 3, this is my S block, 3S2 for magnesium. Yeah, that looks good. Now, if it loses two electrons, it loses them from the energy level that's furthest away from the nucleus. Those are the easiest ones to lose. So the magnesium ion would not have the same configuration. It would be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, but it lost two electrons. So when it loses those two electrons, doesn't it lose the third energy level? So oftentimes, kiddos, when positive ions are created, you lose an energy level. Okay? So oftentimes, energy levels are lost as well. So instead of having three energy levels, you only have two energy levels the shielding effect is reduced and you're physically closer to the nucleus when you lose energy levels. Okay? Alright, so that takes care of positive ions. What about negative ions? How can an atom become a negative ion? Well, let's find an atom on the periodic table that does that. Let's pick on chlorine. Okay? Chlorine's right here, kiddos. Has 17 protons and 17 electrons. All right, so let's see, where do I have room to do that? Let's do that one right here. Chlorine, all right, 17 protons, 17 electrons. Now, the chloride ion, which is Cl negative, is a very, very common ion. How many protons does it have? Yeah, if you said 17 protons, perfect. You cannot mess with the number of protons. But if it's negative one, how many electrons does it have? That's right. 18 electrons. So you've gained an electron without gaining a proton, so you've formed a negative ion. Should we do another one? Okay, let's pick on oxygen. Okay, oxygen has eight protons and eight electrons. Okay, so oxygen, eight protons and eight electrons. The oxygen two negative ion is a very common ion. How many protons does it have? Yeah, if you said 8 protons, good job. How many electrons does it have? If you said 10 electrons, great job. It has two more electrons and it has protons. Well, what do you think about the radius? Do you think the radius changes from a neutral atom to a negative ion? From neutral chlorine to negative chloride? Yeah, you're probably right. It turns out that the size of a negative ion is larger. The radius increases. Now what's the easy reason? Yeah, you now have more electrons than you have protons. The electron to proton ratio gets bigger, or you could say the proton to electron ratio gets smaller. So the proton to electron ratio decreases. Now you're not going to lose energy levels this time. So you take a look at oxygen. If I were to draw the electron configuration for plain old oxygen, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Let's take a look and make sure I'm right. Oxygen 1, 2, 3, 2p4. Yep, 
All right. Now, if I were to do oxygen 2 negative, it would gain electrons in the farthest energy level. So it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So it still has two energy levels, doesn't it? Yeah, so we don't gain energy levels, but the proton to electron ratio gets smaller, so there's fewer protons pulling on those electrons, allowing that electron cloud to increase in size. Okay, so just a couple of examples here on this illustration. You guys can look at the sodium atom. Here's its configuration. And the sodium ion. Notice its configuration is that of neons, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. It only has two energy levels as opposed to three energy levels for the sodium atom. So the ion is considerably smaller. Take a look at chloride. Here's its configuration, the chlorine atom. Neon, 3s2, 3p5. Three energy levels. It has 17 protons and 17 electrons. Now the chloride ion still has 17 protons, kiddos, but as we said earlier, it now has 18 electrons. So its configuration ends with 3s2, 3p6. It becomes like argon, but it still only has 17 protons. So that electron cloud, as you can see, gets bigger. All right? Okay, so profundity. Positive ions are always smaller than the atom from which they came, and negative ions are always bigger. The radius increases than the atom from which they came. So, notice that when you move down a group, what does the ionic radius do? So here's F negative, Cl negative, Br negative, and I negative. Do you notice that the radius increases, whether it's positive or negative? Let's see, lithium positive one, sodium positive one, potassium. Doesn't the radius always get bigger? Okay, so when I go down a group, ionic radius generally increases, just like atomic radius does, right? All right, but when I move across the period, we start changing from positive to negative ions, so things happen. Notice when I go from lithium to beryllium, their positive ions get smaller. Beryllium to boron in, in picometers, it gets smaller. It goes from 31, oh, uh, that's the atomic radius, but it still gets smaller. You can see the positive ions always get smaller when I go across the period. But notice uh, that the negative ions um, when I go well across the period, this goes from 3 negative to 2 negative to 1 negative, they get smaller always also. So positive ions, when I go across the period, positive ions get smaller and negative ions get smaller as well. Okay? But when you go from positive to negative, see that line right there? These are positive ions and then over here we have negative ions you can see that there's a, a little shift because we go from four positive, which is very small, to three negative, which is really big again, and that's because the proton to electron ratio is changing. Okay, we'll stop there for now. We see each other next time. We'll talk about something called ionization energy, which is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.